Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena and I'm a Young People's Programming team member over at the Wigton Festival Company. This event is brought to you by Book Week Scotland, which is kindly supported by the Scottish Book Trust. I'm delighted to be introducing you today to the wonderful Elle McNichol with her new book, A Kind of Spark. A Kind of Spark follows the adventures of 11-year-old Addie, who's campaigning to get a memorial built in her hometown to commemorate the witch trials that have happened in previous years. I really hope you guys enjoyed the book as much as I did, but you're not here to hear me speak, you're here to hear Elle speak. So I'm delighted to pass you over to Elle McNichol. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Book Week Scotland event uh, supported by Scottish Book Trust, produced by Wigtown Festival Company. I am Gavin Hetherington and I am here with Al McNichol and we are talking about a kind of spark and this part we are talking about character creation and creating characters. If you are a writer or an aspiring writer, I find this will be such a beneficial uh, part for your writing journey. So thanks for joining me again, Al. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> um so for characters um we have a plethora of incredible characters and kind of spark they feel so so real and i was wondering if you could talk maybe about our main protagonist addy first and how you developed addy how she came about what was it that attracted you to telling the story of addy cool so as a reader and actually whenever I'm taking in any kind of fiction, whether it's a book or a film or TV or theater, you know, I, all these things I love. Um, and they're all very important if you're a writer to take in as much as you can. But the thing that connects all those things for me that I always love to see is character. I, you know, you can have all the exciting plot points you want, but if the characters aren't exciting and they aren't interesting, then I'm not really engaged. So character is so important and I'm, um, it's probably the most important thing for me when writing. And when Addy arrived, Addy is the main character of A Kind of Spark, that's when everything made sense. So a lot of the plot had already been established. I knew I wanted to write about somebody who was campaigning for a memorial in their town, which is what Addy does. She's campaigning for a memorial in her village in Scotland to memorialize the people who were tried for witchcraft. I knew that was the plot. I thought, you know, I could see that. I said, there's somebody in a small town and they're campaigning for this memorial and the village don't agree with it. And that was the action. Um, and I knew there was going to be a family dynamic and it was going to be about sisters. But that was where I kind of kept hitting a wall and I just was thinking, why can't this work? And there was a couple of characters put in for the main um, protagonist role, you know, the main character role. And it just wasn't working. And I just thought, you know, why isn't this working this plot is pretty sort of you know it works quite well why is this not coming along and it was because of character it's really a lot of books become great when they have that character sort of stepping into the role and Addy came just one day completely like as she was and and the minute I put her into the writing everything made sense and everything was easy um because she's very compassionate, she is very clever, she's um, very stubborn and goes after what she wants and she knows what she wants. And just everything about her made the story work and go quickly. Um, so that's why I cannot stress enough how important it is to get the character exactly right. And if you're writing a story and maybe it's not working or maybe it's a bit difficult, I, try changing the main character because that can really turn the story around um, in ways you wouldn't even imagine. But um, but if you talk about character more generally when you're writing, sorry Gav, to just keep, to keep talking. Okay. But um, <laughs> the thing that um, does make it easier or does make it more exciting for the reader is when you're writing a character and this doesn't have to just be the main character, it really should be all the characters, is to figure out what it is that they want because sometimes I'm reading a book and I can just tell that the character doesn't know what they want and the author doesn't really know what the character wants and that's when the book kind of fizzles out a little bit and or the story I should say you know not just books and all you know I just think this character doesn't really know what they want and that's not very interesting <laughs> to me so 
figure out what the character wants. So in Addie's case, she wants the memorial. That's it. That's what's getting her through each day is I want to get this memorial made. I want to do right by these people who were um, wrongly accused hundreds of years ago. And everything kind of goes from there. Um, so that really can make your storytelling a lot easier. There's another character in the book called Kitty, who's Addie's older sister. Um, if you read the book, you'll know. Uh, Kitty, her only want is to take care of Addie, that everything she does is motivated from there, sometimes to her own detriment. But that's how she figures out all of her decision making. And then Nina, who is the third sister, because there's three sisters in this story, she wants to be famous. She wants to be accepted and famous and loved and respected and adored by many, many people that she will never meet. And that's why she is a sort of influencer in the making and she locks herself away in her room with her laptop, very much like me during lockdown. I've, I don't want to be a hypocrite, but she, you know, she's always, um, you know, on her social media and and trying to, to make herself um, famous so that she can get out of her her town. And so these three sisters having these very um, steadfast wants, is what I call them, wants or objectives, if you want, makes them very easy to write because yes, they have other little, you know, things that they want in life, but these are the things that keep them kind of going. And that really can drive your storytelling and make it easier. So, so what have we said? You need a character that you really, really, you know, can write well and that, you know, fits in the story. And then you need to figure out what they want. And, and that's really going to drive the story and the action a lot more easily. Um, so that, that's part one. <laughs> um, and then I would also say that it's really interesting, and I'm working with this as well on another book I'm writing, is not just to figure out what the character wants, but to also figure out what they are very afraid of. So what is this character's biggest fear and a really interesting writing exercise is to get a character and work out what their biggest fear is and then make them face that fear <laughs> because that's that's what great stories are made of is is people facing down the things that they are most terrified of um, and that can be really interesting reading and you can do it in any genre of book if you're writing a contemporary story like a kind of spark which is a contemporary story meaning it's set now in the world that we live in or if you're writing a fantasy book or a sci-fi or a murder mystery you know murder mysteries are quite easy because the main character usually just wants to solve the murder that's very that's their objective so it's you know it's already done for you um Fantasies are very high stakes. You've got to know what the characters want in a fantasy book. You've got to know what they're scared of because usually the villain or the monster is a little bit what they're most scared of. Um, so these two things, what do I want and what am I afraid of? That's going to make the most interesting story, I think. Um, if you are about to write your first story, that's something that's really important to think about. You don't have to say it say it outright you don't have to say this character is afraid of this or this character wants this but you just need to remember it when you're writing those scenes um and then the reader will pick up on it so yeah um <laughs> so so when you're talking about wants and a character wants something there are always obstacles in the way of that exactly. so we do have some antagonistic characters in the book who prevents Addie from getting what she she's working for, what she's fighting for, what she wants. Um, so is it important to have characters who aren't sympathetic? We do have characters like Miss Murphy and other adults who prevent Addie from getting what she wants. Is it equally important for an antagonist to have a want? And that's usually to just get in the way of the protagonist. Absolutely. I mean, that's what an antagonist does. They they get in the way of the act. They stop you from getting through the action. So 100%, that's a brilliant point is the antagonist's job is to stop, you know, and there are a few antagonists in this book. Yes, Miss Murphy is a, is a big one. She's probably also a villain. Um, you know, they can sometimes be different antagonists and villains, but she's a villain. Um, but also the antagonists are the town elders. They they don't dislike Addie. They, they aren't, you know, mean or horrible, but they also don't want to give her what she wants. So they therefore are antagonists and they're obstacles and they're getting in the way of that objective. And, one piece, you know, one scene in the book that people really, really like is the second time the villagers say no and they vote against Addie and they say, no, we're not going to give you this memorial. She says, 
well, I'm just going to keep trying. I'll decide when to give up. I'm not giving up now. And people love that moment in the book. They write to me and tell me that they love that moment because that's what you have to do. And that's why that's why we read stories. You know, when we're, we're, we're feeling a certain way in our own life, it's, it's very, very empowering to read a book and see someone who just keeps getting up and keeps going. Um, so it's hugely important. I, I think antagonists are, are more important than protagonists in a lot of ways because um, we, we all have people in our lives who get in the way and stop, stop um, you know, stop us from from doing uh, what we want to do or being who we want to be. And you know, if whether or not you overcome those those antagonists, it's that's where so much of the um, excitement is. And like I said, if you're writing a fantasy, um, then sometimes the antagonist is what you're most afraid of. It's that you know, big manifestation of what you're afraid of. And if you're doing a murder mystery, the antagonist is probably going to be the murderer, whoever that is. And it's just about figuring out who they are. Um, so that's extremely important, especially in um, middle grade to have good and evil supposedly really, which is, you know, what yeah. all great stories are about. It is an important message for children in children's books to see characters overcome that and to achieve their dreams and things and I, it, again you're like a real life example of that you were told in publishing that you couldn't publish this but you did um so is it important for writers to put a lot of themselves into these characters is that what makes them feel authentic or do you think there is some like leeway there as well that's an interesting question because i do get a lot of um i got a really lovely bunch of letters from some kids yesterday and almost every letter they were saying which character are you you know which which one are you and it's such an interesting question because you think, oh, I don't, you know, I, I haven't written a character and then sneakily changed the name and, you know, gone, oh, that's me. But no one will ever know because I've changed the name. It's not like that. But, you know, I like to tell people um, your characters come from you, all of them, not just the good ones, the bad ones do as well. And that's it really interesting. So the book I'm writing right now, which is different from Spark, has a villain in it that has been so interesting to write and is real is you know if you thought miss murphy was bad this villain is worse but this villain's very <laughs> this villain's very very ambitious so i thought you know miss murphy was based you know a little bit on a teacher that i had and i i don't actually think there's any of me in, in miss murphy i hope there's none of me in miss murphy but when i wrote this villain that i'm writing right now i thought i'm going to put a little bit of me in her him her just to make it <laughs> in them just to make it a little bit more um challenging for me but also maybe a little bit more scary to people so I put a lot of my ambition into into this character um and that's actually what made them really 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 bad and that's that was interesting for me even though this character this is maybe a little bit boring because nobody knows what I'm talking about but if in uh, some day you will but um, you know this character has ambition like me, but they go about it in a different way. Um, so it, it's not that you put yourself into, into you, you write yourself into a book, it's that you put little seeds of yourself into characters, or you put little expressions that you you know other people in your life say. Um, you know, the, the town um, assembly member in a kind of spark is called Mr. McIntosh, and he he's based on a real person that I, no, and sometimes I've slipped up and said the wrong name because he's he's very um, real. Um, so yeah, there's definitely real life in every author's book. And unfortunately, when you write a contemporary book, everyone assumes it's like a memoir and that it's just your your life and your diary. Um, they don't, you know, when people write about wizards and dragons, people they don't have to sort of explain themselves as much. But um, but I think it's more that you just plant little pieces of yourself into you their voices and and then they grow off into trees that are completely different to you but there's little little seeds in there um but yeah you've got to you've got to make them different from you to be interesting and also we don't see ourselves the way other people see us we don't see ourselves maybe even the way we really are um so it's it's probably better to keep yourself a little bit out of your story um but yeah so I hope that answered the question. No, it, it did, it did. And uh, sometimes we don't see ourselves at all in stories as well. No, so, exactly. we, yeah, so with you talking about 
having this book with a, an autistic main character. We also have her sister, uh, Katie, and her other sister, Nina, who is neurotypical. Um, so I guess my question with that sisterhood dynamic is, is that like writing sisters and writing different like branches of um, neurodiversity, is that uh, something that you would, you found easy to do in your writing was that like when you were creating those characters was that something that you found ended up being fundamental to your story progression having that sisterhood definitely it's definitely a book about sisters and I tell people you know if you like books like Little Women you're probably you might really like um this book because it's got you know real sisterhood dynamics in it um, yeah, it was really important to have two neurodivergent sisters because a lot of the time in stories, although mo many, many stories do not have neurodivergent characters in them, um, it was important for me to have two so that they could talk to each other, so that there, the Addie wasn't isolated and, and on her own. And she has this older sister who's like a mentor and who can actually give her a lot of information and hold her hand a lot and explain things that... Um, you know, she wouldn't otherwise be able to, to figure out herself. And, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, like I said, I get letters saying which character are you, and a lot of people say like, oh, you're Kitty, aren't you? Like, you're, that's who you are. And I say, no, Kitty's actually, she's kind of the imaginary friend I wish I'd had when I was Addie's age. She sort of is this wise, person that has a lot of the answers she's very human which if you read the book or have read the book you'll know more about that by the end but she has a lot of wisdom and and, and help to offer which I didn't have when I was Addie's age and a lot of the young Addies reading this book will not have so she's there not just to hold Addie's hand but to hold the reader's hand and say you know I'm going to explain this to you I'm going to make it make sense um, which it might otherwise not make sense. Um, so it was extremely important and it was important to have Nina as well to have a contrast. And also just because I thought, um, you know, and again, if you're writing a story and you're trying to work out what characters you want, it's important to write about things that you're interested in. And I'm really interested in people who are influencers, people who are not in maybe the way that they would hope, but um, I'm really interested in that in that life. and and. You know, Nina is a very grumpy character and she's very distant from everybody and, and not the most cheerful person. But the minute the camera is on, she lights up and is completely different. And I'm, I love that kind of dichotomy and I find that really interesting. So I, I, I made Nina that way just because I wanted to write about it and I thought it would be fun to do and it was. So that's another important thing if you're a young writer um, is to also write about things that you find interesting and to explore things that you find interesting. And, um, and and create characters that are the kind of characters you want to read about and the characters you want to watch in life. Um, but that sisterhood dynamic was essential and that was always there from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, do we have much time for another question? Yes, we have time for one more, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so we have, like, characters play a very big role in this, especially when you look at Addie and Audrey. Um, so they are two really great friends. They become great friends. Um, and Audrey, essentially, did you have her in as a sort of way of kind of neurotypical readers to be able to understand more about Addie being neurodivergent and autistic? Is Was that a way of like, for, I mean, I'm neurotypical. Was that a way for like a reader like me to sort of see things and be able to ask questions? And that was like through Audrey? I suppose, yeah, Audrey naturally ends up asking questions about Addie's autism because she's never met an autistic person before, um, never met an openly autistic person before, so she's very curious. So yeah, um, some of the questions Audrey asks are the questions that you hear a lot when you're neurodivergent. So yeah, it was a way to sort of answer them in, in a space that you know, we, we could talk about it and, and also to sort of say, it's okay to ask these questions. Um, as long as you're, you know, polite and, and, and compassionate, it's okay to be curious. Um, and it was important that an autistic character got to explain themselves and, and say it in their own words and from their point of view. But Audrey really was one of those characters. I'm a planner, so I plot out the book before I, I write it. Not every little thing, just sort of the A to B to C to D. But Audrey just walked into the story completely uninvited and and 
and it wasn't a conscious choice to have her be this sort of representative for neurotypical friends but that's what she kind of became but she really came fully formed and when you're writing those characters are really exciting the ones that just appear without any work or planning beforehand um but yeah she's she definitely asks questions that um I was getting asked a lot and now I don't get asked them anymore because people have read the book and they they um they've listened so so yeah but she's just curious and that's okay and that's part of you know that's part of her want is she wants to have a friend in this new town she's a new kid at school she wants to fit in and have a friend and she knows that if she if Addie's going to be her friend she has to learn about her and meet her halfway so again that comes back to what does this character want and that's you know that's where that comes from yeah and it's great as well for children's books to be able to teach and to show compassion kindness curiosity yeah. and giving them a safe space to be able to ask those questions so Absolutely. kind of spark does that for for a neurodivergent audience who um need well you've kind of like given them a voice really it's and given Addy that voice so so thank you again so much l for joining me and talking all things a kind of spark and character creation and about the incredible characters in a kind of spark uh, a huge thank you again to Book Week Scotland and supported by Scottish Book Trust and produced by Wigtown Festival Company. Thank you so much and hopefully see you in the next event. <laughs> Bye.